It's been a deadly end for 2023. A volunteer, firefighter dead, nine people dead from storms in southeast Queensland. I mean, there's issues just everywhere. Our thoughts, well, they continue to be with the people, of course, of far north Queensland. The aftermath of that devastating far north Queensland floods really can't be forgotten by anyone. Long-term locals tell me it's the worst flooding in and around Cairns since 1977. The point is that this sort of flooding has, of course, happened before. Of course, since 1977, there's been about a 10, maybe 20-fold increase in the amount of housing. And the result is all that tarmac and tiles now there deflecting water, when in the past, much would have just soaked into the countryside. The climate catastrophists, well, they're cashing in on this human misery. It's rank. The Queensland Premier says it's all unprecedented. No, <laughs> it's not even if he's never seen it before. Now, one thing is for certain, the floods in the far north have again exposed a failure to properly manage our lands and indeed our transport infrastructure. A bit of road and rail system is needed in the north of this country, not just for the convenience of locals and tourists on good days, but also for our national security, because such infrastructure will bring all of that on bad days. With major roads cut, Airlifts were the only option last week. Meanwhile, in Australia's third largest city, Brisbane, the trains, well, they're off the tracks for four weeks. That's a metaphor for where Australia and Queensland is. The trains between the third and sixth largest cities of Australia, that's Brisbane and the Gold Coast, but they're off the tracks. The trains from Sydney, no doubt affected too. You see, it's all because of the slowest infrastructure project in Australian history, something called Cross River Rail. It's a project which never stacked up to the Australian government assessments, but it went ahead as a vanity project for the now-departed Premier and her now-departed Transport Minister. It was an ego or a vanity project which has more than doubled in price, even though some costs seem hidden in Olympic infrastructure works. You know, wasting money when work is actually needed somewhere else. So South East Queensland trains are on a network that was designed in the 1860s. They're off the tracks for four weeks as they try and work out how to connect what they've built with what's already there. I think it's a national scandal and it's a project which has become a mainstay for union income, the same unions which are contributing so much to Labor's various campaign coffers. Queensland Rail, it seems, is a great place to work if only people just don't want to catch trains. But this failure to build infrastructure for burgeoning areas like the far north and a failure to rejuvenate infrastructure built 150 years ago. It's hurting Queensland, and it therefore is hurting all of Australia. So much of our national wealth comes from areas north of the Tropic of Capricorn, yet our decision-making is done much further south. And tonight, the massive Herbert River system, well, it's on flood alert. Fresh water is just going to flood out to sea instead of getting caught in dams because they're not being built. Last week, Prime Minister Albo, well, he went north. He took his VIP 737. Uh, as soon as Cairns Airport floodwaters had subsided, he landed. He wasn't hose, uh, holding a hose or a mop, uh, but it was actually good he went there, even if it was just for the media. But let that sink in. Cairns Airport, which is capable of landing international flights, jumbo jets, was covered in water. The Captain Cook Highway, National Highway 1, north of Cairns, is still cut in a number of places. Basically, tens of thousands of Australians have been isolated from the rest of us. I think our country's failed the North, failed to invest in the infrastructure we need to keep people safe. Our national security is impacted also by this failure. The massively long Bruce Highway, Highway Number 1, it's a national highway between Brisbane and Cairns, was only constructed as a result of World War II as a project of the civilian of the Civil Construction Corps. And the idea was to link isolated communities under threat from invasion. It often gets cut now by floods. It's a goat track in some parts. It deserves a national focus to make it a mainstay lifeline during times of floods, during times of storms, and, dare I say it, during times of foreign threat. You know, we hear none of this from our lefty-lovey leaders, the Prime Minister, the new Queensland Premier, Stephen Miles. You know, they prefer to just shift the blame. Look over there. It's climate change. They just want to manage the misery of the lack of investment. That's what the lack of investment in the north has actually generated. We certainly need new dams. We need waterways, management. All of that's well established. But we get nothing. 
Likewise, the demonising of coal, the economic mainstay of Queensland's economy, well, the equally plentiful natural gas and oil reserves, all designed to keep the inner city elites happy, all of that has been demonised. These elites may see themselves as intellectual and moral superiors to the rest of us, but they're ruining Australia. They're making us prone to foreign takeover, economic and territorial. Investment in the north of this country, on both coasts and right up the middle, it's critical to our future. I think the Prime Minister is right now failing before our eyes. He's likely to sacrifice a few ministers in his cabinet just to try and save himself. But of course, the ones he should punt will no doubt survive. And Labor wonders why it has a Queensland problem.